I'm going to show you guys um, where to get the Cake PHP, how to download it, how to install it, etc., etc. Now, before okay, so let's dive into Cake PHP. I have provided on Blackboard. If you guys haven't noticed, I have provided under my course content a book called Beginning Cake PHP from novice to professional. This is the book. Come on, you can make it. This is the book, okay? Which I'm sharing with you guys. This book will go through all the process that we're going to go as well. It tells you where to find Cake PHP, how to download it, how to install it. In fact, it takes you step by step on developing a blog, a website, a blog website. Okay? <coughs> really good. Really good book. Very simple to follow. But I'm also publishing on Blackboard an online tutorial on Cake, P Cake PHP. This online tutorial, if you click on it, it will take you to this tutorial. It's called book.cakephp.org. Excellent website. Excellent website. It's actually a whole cookbook. It has 12 chapters, and same thing. It takes you step by step on how to download, install, and work through. I think their sample is also a blog. I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the models. sure what they are. Let me see the controllers. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's under tutorials and examples. So all the way at the end of the book, the beginning of the book, the first few chapters is just the syntax, the theory behind. And then in the tutorials, examples, you will find two tutorials, two samples. One is the blog, which this is what I suggest you start working on for next week. Okay? After you watch my video lecture. My video lecture will be available probably on a Monday or Tuesday. Okay? So you guys can start working on the blog. The good thing about this example is that it's it's very simple. In fact, it's very few lines of code. And you're going to see the power of Cake PHP precisely for that reason because you can develop a full-blown website with very few lines of code. Okay? So that's it. The book the PDF book that I'm sharing with you guys and the book .org. Where do you guys find Cake PHP? Cake PHP you will find it under cakephp.org. This is the website 
made up by thousands of developers worldwide publishing and making available this open source framework okay right now this just stay away from the extra hot stuff for now what I want what I suggest you to do, you do is you download 1.3.13 here it is download 1.3.13 it's a stable release these guys don't give you any hassle about registering and whatnot. You go to their homepage and right off the homepage you click on download and you got it. It's a zip file. Okay? It's a zip file. So I suggest you download that file and you unzip it. So when you download that file this is the file downloaded. If you open it, basically contains one folder. And inside that folder, you will find all the stuff that makes Cake PHP work. Okay? So what I suggest you do is you unzip that folder and when you unzip it, rename it. I don't know why they put cake PHP dash cake PHP dash six zero df whatever whatever. Just rename it to cake PHP. And you unzip it on your HT docs of your Apache. Here it is. Cake PHP. I just kept it simple. Cake PHP folder under the HT docs. Okay. All right. Basically, every Cake PHP project is going to have the same structure. In fact, you're going to see that when you start reading about Cake PHP, the idea about Cake PHP is convention over configuration. What does that mean? Anybody tell me? What does convention over configuration mean? And it's the same case for Ruby and Rails and it's the same case for all the other MVC pattern. Basically is we all going to convene on some standard. And as long as we follow that standard and do not deviate from it, everything is going to be smooth. In fact, so smooth that you practically do not have to configure anything extra. Okay? So you probably won't have to go through the same headache that we went through trying to get MySQL connected with Apache connected to PHP and all these headaches that we had because there are so many different ways of doing it that it's all based on configuration. You have to configure this file, you have to configure this other file, you have to move files around, you have to configure them to be able to r make them work together. In this case, a Cake PHP project should not have to be configured as long as you follow the same convention. And these are the conventions. So once you download it, one of the conventions is every project will look like this. The app folder. The app will contain the following folders. Config, controllers, libraries, locale, models, plugins, tests, temporary, vendors, views, and web root. That's the convention. Every project must have it. In fact, when you guys develop your project this is what it's going to look like okay but let's look at three very important ones remember we're implementing the MVC pattern did I go through the MVC pattern explanation and all that stuff last week a little bit let's take a look at the most important ones controllers models and views. Here's the pattern. 
right here established in different folders MVC model view controller basically what you guys are going to do is you're going to I thought I explained this what you guys are going to do is you're going to split your application into three major components where is it you're going to split the project that you just got that you guys just built remember I explained I think I did explain this pretty much all your your PHP pages right now has HTML it has uh, SQL statements it has a whole bunch of PHP all together in one place and basically what you guys are going to do is you're going to have to extract the different concerns inside that page and put them in separate places so you guys are going to create what it's called a controller and typically there's going to be a controller for every functional requirement that you guys are building so you're building the list of teams guess what there's going to be one controller in charge of listing teams you're going to have another one for standings in the tournament okay so there's going to be a controller called standings that will take care of that functional requirement registration there's going to be a, a controller called registration that will take care of registration so basically every functional requirement will be represented by a controller and this controller will have functions in it actions that it can do functions okay and you are going to be able to notify through the URL what controller and what action you want to execute and basically that URL be, will be handled by that specific controller and the controller will say oh you want me to list the teams I know who can help me and it's going to go right to the model section, the component of your project. So you, this is another component in your project. And it's going to say, hey, I know there's one model called Teams that knows everything about Teams. Knows how to get them out of the database. In fact, it knows the CRUDs. It creates, the reads, the updates, and the deletes on Teams. So it's going to handle, the controller is going to delegate that um, responsibility to the teams model and the teams model typically think about this when I ask you guys to create your entities and tell me what your main entities were pretty much every entity that you came up with in your web application is almost like every table in the database pretty much that's what it is and actually you're gonna find that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the model and a table in the database you have a users in the table in the database you're gonna have a users model you have a teams table in the database you're gonna have a teams model okay and these team model will know exactly how to communicate to the database and do the cruds with the database you don't even have to worry about that stuff in cake PHP so forget about building queries at all no more queries. That's all be handled will be handled through the cake PHP. And then when the model says, Oh, I know how to do it. so it goes to the database, grabs it, and here is the information controller. So the controller says, Okay, now that I have the information, I know where exactly to send it so that we can view it. And so it knows what's gonna be the view. And that's another model, another um, not model, another component of your website. The views okay and the views are pretty much all done by you um, so that's going to be the easy part actually the more the, mo the, the, mo the critical part is going to be build the controllers and the models because you guys pretty much have the views done okay so given that Having downloaded Cake PHP, having installed Cake PHP, we're going to go with some of the 
basic principles in the structure. Well, first of all, let's go a little bit into the book. The book it's also narrates the same stuff, but it will give you also an idea of what the URLs are going to look like. So let me display it in a single page so you guys can see it. So this is it. This is you know pretty much the same stuff telling you what the model view controller is about and all that stuff. Here it is. This is what a URL will look like in Cake PHP. So right now, think about your project. Your project is localhost, maybe 8080, maybe not, slash registration or whatever, right? Slash and then a page. Index.php, registration.php, and all that stuff. You know, a whole bunch of PHP. You probably have developed like 10 or 12 PHPs, right? And then if you need any parameters, then you pass to the URL the question mark, and then you put a whole bunch of parameters. With Cake PHP, that is no longer the case. With Cake PHP, notice that you're going to have your domain, which is what? Localhost, right? Localhost 8080, whatever. Then it's going to be followed by the application. So it's the same thing. It's going to be registration. It's going to be whatever your project is. Right? In fact, it's the same name as the folder where you're going to have your project. And then it's followed by the controller name. So if you want to list teams, the URL is going to be localhost slash uh, hockey slash list teams. If that's the controller, if that's the functional that you want to get. If it's registration, then it's going to be localhost 8080 slash uh, hockey slash registration. Then it's going to be followed by any specific action. And if you do not specify an action, it will default to the index action. And the index pretty much means display the list. So an action could be what? Could be a create, an update, a delete, any one of those, right? A function inside the controller that does it by whatever. In this case, by region. And then you pass the parameters, the actual parameters that you need. So if you want to list, for instance, if you want to show the team, the one that I, that I that I show you guys, which was New York Rangers, I think. This will be the this will be the URL. It will be localhost 8080 hockey uh, team show one. That's it. There is no indication in here that your website is built in PHP. No indication. You will not see any more of those .php with question marks, so and so. No. So what basically you have to do is you have to concentrate on the development of the controllers and the models. You guys already have the views and the database. Okay? And you know, pretty much tells you how it's done in this is the same thing as the MVC pattern done in in PHP. Right? So who is the client? A browser. It does a request with that URL. So it does the request to a sp special PHP that is part of the Cake PHP libraries. It's called a dispatcher. And what's it going to do? The dispatcher is going to take that URL and gonna say it's going to parse it. It's going to say, oh, he wants the hockey website. Oh, he wants the team controller. Oh, he wants the show action. And it will 
know what controller to call and what action in that controller to call. And that action in the controller will know exactly what model to use. If it's teams, and it's more probably it's going to, if it's team information that you need, then it's most probably it's going to be the team model. And this team model, it's a very smart guy. In fact, with very few lines of PHP code, you guys are going to be able to do a mapping between your model and your database. And this model is so smart that you guys do not have to write any single SQL statement anymore. You just have to tell it, give me all, find one stuff like that. And the model will go into the database, know how to do the query, will bring back the information and it will give it to you. In fact, it will give it back to the action of the controller. And then that action of the controller, based on, wha based on what action it was, it knows what view to send that information. So it displays it. That's it. So pretty much everything that was all compacted into one PHP is all broken into all those pieces. Got it? Okay. Now, you guys have to prepare your PHP I and I so that it can handle cake PHP because once you once you download and you know what I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna do it again for you guys cuz I don't want to miss any steps here I'm gonna take the cake PHP the cake PHP that I downloaded right and I'm going to unzip it. Just uncompressed cake PHP 1313. Like I said, I'm going to rename it to cake PHP to make it simple. And then I'm going to cut it and paste it in my I have changed my HD docs by the way. I'm now my HD docs is PHP projects. That's no big deal. Probably have a cake PHP here, so I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna paste it. So this is the one that I just uncompressed. Right? My SQL then what are you gonna do? You're gonna hit your local host, eighty eighty and then you're going to put cake PHP in it. And you're going to get a whole bunch of errors because your cake PHP is not set up yet. It's going to tell you please change the value of security salt in the config core PHP to a salt value specific to your application. So you're going to have to go into your cake PHP. Here it is. There is an app, there is a config, and there is a core. And you open that core and you will look for salt. Here it is. Salt. This security salt it's going to be used by cake php to keep track of session to keep track of hashes and stuff like that you just have to make it unique to your application in other words don't leave the default this is the default the, com the one that comes down from the from the download how do you make it unique just change something change that to a 1 change that to a j change that to an 8 and then change that to a B. Alright? Just make it unique. And then it's going to ask you to do the same thing here. The security cipher seed. App, 
config core.php. Here it is, the security cipher seed. And it's just telling you, change it to a numeric digits only, right? Seed value specific to your application. So you just change a few digits. You change that for a 2, you change that to a 4, you change that to a 0, you change that one to a 1, and you change that one to a 7. Now, cake PHP, cake PHP already has a .ht access. In fact, when you download it and you unzip it and you put it there, it's right there. Cake PHP already has an HT access, and it has an HT access with other directives. In fact, it has a and direct this with rewrite engine on. And there's a rewrite rule, two rewrite rules. Okay? Basically, these directives are going to allow Cake PHP to manipulate your website. Equal. Put Cake PHP on your HT dogs and run it. Of course, any configuration settings changes. Any configuration changes, you have to restart your server. Then I'm going to refresh. That's what I got. Your database configuration file is not present. I need you to rename your database PHP default to database PHP. So let's go back to Apache uh, to Cake PHP. Where is Cake PHP? Here it is. App config. Yes, indeed. It has a file called database.php.default. What does it say? It says rename that database PHP default to database PHP. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rename it to database.php. Now I'm curious. So I'm going to look into what it says. I don't know what the da database PHP has. Oh, look at this one. This PHP has my database configuration. This is the reason why you guys are going to stop doing my SQL database connects in PHP. No longer you have to do that. Why? Because that connection is in one place, in one file. This one. In here, you are going to fill out the database information to connect to your database. So, what driver are we using? There are two databases. There's the default and there's the test. And that's another MVC pattern. In fact, it's a rapid development design. Typically, when you develop, you develop on two separate environments. You develop on the development environment, and then you test it on a different environment. Okay? So there are two databases here. There's the default, which is the development, and then there's the test. So let's just fill out the default information. The default is going to be a MySQL database. It's going to be persistent false. We don't want a persistent. The host is going to be local host. The user is going to be root. The password is going to be none. And the database is going to be called, that's up to you guys. My database, I'm going to make it, let me see what databases I have here. I think it's site name. You guys remember the registration? Yeah, yeah, this is the registration database, site name. So I'm going to make it side name. Now, prefix is asking whether the tables in your database will have a prefix. We're not going to have a prefix, so don't worry about it. And the encoding UTF-8 is uh, uh, commented out. So this is going to be the database. 
localhost root we don't specify port we could specify a port if we change the default but we kept the default so we're not going to change that then we go back to localhost kphp and we're going to refresh ah your database configuration file is present cake is able to connect to the database if i were to make a mistake and create a blah 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 database save it and refresh it it will tell me your database configuration file is present yes because database.php is there but cake is not able to connect to the database okay so that's when you change it to site name which you know it's a database that exists and then you refresh it right now we're in this third chapter of the book the KPHP group. Okay. The installation is very simple, and this is basically what we did. The development installation is the fastest method to set up Cake. Uh, this is the HT access. This is the app. This is the Cake. It tells you how it's being set up in production. You guys don't have to worry about that because you're not going to set anything in production yet. This is it. This is the Apache mod rewrite that I was talking about. Okay? So you have to allow overwrite all to set do you set all for the correct document root? Make sure that an HT access override is allowed and that allow override is set to all for the correct document root. So in other words, for your cake PHP, make sure that you have that allow override all. Okay, this is the other one. I remember. I remember. This is the other one. You have to allow load module mod rewrite. That's why it's telling you that. Make sure you are loading up mod rewrite correctly. You should see something like this. Mod rewrite. That is so. That's on your http.conf. So you do have to modify it after all. Here it is. mod mod underscore rewrite there you go please verify that this is commented out in your htt.conf it is web service but you guys don't have to do into it and then what do you do? You fire it up. So you go to, you know, whatever local host, cake, PHP, the bat. So, and the idea is to develop it as close as possible to the cake PHP convention precisely for that reason, to, pr to, to prevent so much configuration. All right? All right, guys, so that's it. What I need you guys to be able to do is be able to generate this page with all green. This page, all green.